Hello and welcome everyone. Today is an interesting conversation that I wanted to have. I get questions a lot about what it takes to be a good touring musician. So today we're going to deep dive into the unwritten rules of the road. Today we're going to dive into the unwritten rules of the road with my good friend and fellow Brit Floyd bandmate sometimes, Dr. Mike D'Angelo from University of Iowa. He is the assistant visiting professor of jazz percussion. Welcome, D. Hello. It's good to see you. We are how far away? How many time zones? Seven? Uh, yeah. So today I'm I'm in Stavanger, Norway, and you're in Iowa City, Iowa. City, <laughs> Iowa. <laughs> seven hours difference i actually just got off stage and uh we had a really nice show but tomorrow we have a double in bergen norway and we've never done that before in my time so this is going to be a very long day for me but whatever let anyway let's dive into this let's the do it first rule that i wanted to to put forth which i actually think is the most important rule is don't be an asshole <laughs> Yes, 100%. Be respectful of everybody's space. Space is always really limited. You're sharing dressing rooms. You're sharing space on the bus. Um, you're quite often really sharing space on the stage, you know, especially in like a, like a really tight gig. You know, we've, we play a couple of those here and there. Matt and I do this constantly, and I'm, I'm really thankful that he's like really respectful of, of space, and I try to be really respectful of his space too. It's just, it's great to make sure that you're not impeding on somebody's space because you don't, you really don't want to piss off the people that you're spending so much time with on the road. They'll like you a lot better for it. Yeah, for sure. And it's, I think, a luxury sometimes to get to a venue and you have your own space and you have your own dressing room. Most of the time you're sharing with, you know, especially smaller venues, there might be one dressing room, two dressing rooms. And you'll have to share with everyone. So, yeah, it's very important to be respectful of people's sp spaces and, you know, um, especially when people are changing and, you know, doing all those things. And yeah, I'm actually doing the opposite of this rule right now. I kicked Matt's ass out of the dressing room because I'm sharing with him today. So <laughs> he'll probably come back in a little while. <laughs> yeah. And also, he's, he's my favorite person to share a room with. He's so easy. Yeah. And then also, you know, like on top of not being an asshole with your bandmates, it's also important to be really nice to everyone that's involved in the production, both in your organization and also outside every venue that you go to, being nice to the local crew, the team that works at these venues. I mean, I think they remember just as much, you know, about... Oh, yeah. How you treated them versus your experience at the venue. And so, you know, I've, I've never personally had an experience where like a venue didn't want to invite an act back because they were mean. But I'm sure it happens a lot. Yeah. I, you know, nobody at Brit Floyd's ever mean. They're they're really nice people, obviously, as you know, because mm -hmm. you've you've come out. But um, yeah, we've had we've had a couple of instances where, uh, well, for most of you at home, Brit Floyd is basically full of children. All the time we're just children on the road and we definitely got a very stern talking to at a venue because um, two of my bandmates decided to throw ginger at each other in a hallway for a half an hour one day <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's just stupid things like that you know i mean yeah we, i think we've gotten in trouble for playing mini golf in the hallways of some of the venues before and things like that too so we prob probably shouldn't do that. But yeah, you really, you want to be asked back. You want to be remembered fondly. Most people do. And usually when they see us doing stupid stuff like that, they kind of laugh about it, but they're like, can you please not? For sure. Yeah. Uh, there's a, there's a balance between like staying sane and, oh, you know, being, man, yeah. being respectful and, you know, keeping things clean and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Okay. So part B of, um, don't be an asshole is respect everyone's time. Um, some things that come to mind are like, you know, laundry where, for instance, like I'm in Europe right now, laundry is m more difficult in that it's more time consuming over here. And so, you know, doing your laundry and then not 
not being attentive to when it needs to move to the dryer or, you know, if it needs to dry a couple times, you know, so that somebody else can kind of get in that queue. You really got to pay attention to that stuff. Like every minute counts during the day. And then, um, you know, the other thing too, is just like scheduled events through the day. Like we don't, Brit Floyd obviously doesn't have like a terrible schedule, but you know, you want to do things like sound check on time, whatever, whatever that is. Like somebody may have something else that they, they need to do. And our, our sound checks are so short. Like it's very easy to get a sound check done in that time. You know, like today we did one song and then we can get off stage and go back to whatever we were doing. So being being super respectful of everybody's time, like, I mean, you know, there's the musician motto is like uh, early is early on time, is on, time yeah. on time is late. Yeah. And, and yeah. that goes for obviously things outside of your normal day to day, like when you have days off and you have a lobby call. And, you know, hey, the bus is leaving at X time and, you you know, you like you don't want to be that person that everyone's waiting on when, you know, the bus is trying to leave, especially because a lot of these bus drivers are on schedules and they they're so yeah. pressed for time that, you know, even just 20 minutes might throw off, you know, a, a overnight journey. So, yeah, it's 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 always just, you know, um, you guys are really fortunate that you have an app called Master Tour that gives you all of that information, which is nice. But um, a lot of the smaller productions, you know, there's a cost associated with that app. So, you know, you kind of have to, 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 to be on top of the day-to-day -day schedule, you know, cause sometimes sound checks change and sometimes there's dark stages and sometimes there's, um, seven show instead of eight thirty show. So you got to really be on top of the schedule and, and know when things are and, and plan your day. But also like paying attention to master tour and then whatever way that your band likes to message back and forth. Mm -hmm. Like, so master tour, uh, you know, if you if you have really good management like we do, it has your daily schedule. It has like some like we have tech writers in ours. We have are there enough uh, washer and dryers? You know, what's the Wi-Fi password for the day? Like everything is there. You should have no questions if you're paying attention to your stuff. So you can kind of get on and get through your day knowing that it's all there. If you don't know what to do, look on Master Tour. I think there's even a sticker that they hand out about it. Yeah. Okay, so part C, don't hold grudges on tour. Get everything out in the open at the point where it becomes a problem because the moment that you walk on stage, you can always sense tension between people who have this tension. Yeah, 100%. You know, I think, you know, obviously one of the, the, the best things to do, especially in a touring group, is to communicate and to have conversations and if there is any kind of you know not grudge but if there's a disagreement or a, you know a question or just anything it's it's nice to just talk to people about those things you know i'm i'm thinking about there was a viral clip recently of was it jane's addiction where i think it was like dave navarro <laughs> like somebody got punched like on stage or something like that's that's obviously the 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 you know, the extreme case, yeah. but it does happen, right? Because you have those grudges and you have oh, yeah. those, you know, things that are left unaddressed. So yeah, it's, it's like, I think communication is the best thing for sure. Yeah. I mean, we've all played, we've all played those gigs with that tension and like, I'm 37 years old. I don't have time to deal with that shit. Like <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's move on. We all have to get on the bus later and also coexist in a smaller space than we're in right now. Mm-hmm. But all right. So, OK, so let's move on to uh, the second rule of of being a great musician on the road, which is keep your show in check. What I mean by that is like, you know, the first big thing for me is mistakes. So I know that, you know, in a lot of worlds, like in the Broadway world, like you make a mistake and it, it's possible that you could like put it, get put on probation or get fired or whatever else. But like, you know, out here. And especially in, in like the tribute band music that we play, you know, sometimes we're even playing mistakes that they made on the original recordings. But and sometimes we still screw those up entirely. And making a mistake, I don't think is a bad thing. The part that bothers me is when you make the same mistake a second time, when you haven't gone back to figure out why something wasn't working. That's a that's a that's a big no, no for me. Like. Yeah. Yeah. And I, that's my rule of thumb. I try to only make the mistake once and then try to never make that 
again at, at, at the very least not twice in a row yeah <laughs> you know um, because it, it shows that okay I, I recognize there was an issue with a part that I played and then I went and fixed it but also having the ability when things go wrong you know like because there are some times where just shit happens you know um, like I, I remember very fondly when I was out with you guys I was subbing and we were playing High Hopes, which is one of my favorite songs uh, of the Pink Floyd catalog. And Damien goes to start his lap steel solo, and there's just no sound, <laughs> you know. And <laughs> there, there was no cable. There's no cable, and he just kind of shrugs it. But and of course, we're all playing to a sequence, so you know, like we can't let that affect what we're doing. And then it all kind of, you know, it, 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 you know, the the whole train falls apart there, you know. So, you know having the flexibility to react to things you know i've i've been on gigs where my in-ears go out i've been on uh, gigs where something breaks you know so you know recognizing that as well and not letting that kind of affect you i mean it's it's kind of a mental game you know you the one little thing happens and that can throw your psyche off for the rest of the performance so you know just having that ability to kind of you know quickly realign and get yourself up and then keep going is very important the thing that I, that actually just occurred to me is maybe we should insert a little part B to this mistake thing, which is um, understanding your role in the hierarchy of the band when said things go wrong. I mean, if you if something is going wrong on stage and it's to the point that your show doesn't function properly, you need to very quickly, I think, understand in your head who is the person in line that you should be falling like following to finish out the rest of the song you know for me in particular like i'm like a very tertiary musician on stage and so the first person that i'm looking for if something like if something's going wrong with damien on stage who's like you know prime number one guy the next person i'm looking for is the drummer to make sure that like the form's right the tempo's right the sections are hitting when they're supposed to hit i think that's important to understand who you are and where you are on stage Mm -hmm. who's the next leader yeah for sure okay so now maybe let's lean into part c of this which is uh one of one of my more favorite things which is don't be the person who always has problems with their gear of course yeah you never want something to fail on a show and you know, there are obviously very different levels of touring shows. And if you're very fortunate to have a tech that is responsible for your gear, you know, that's that's one of the best relationships that you can have on a gig like that, which, you know, going back to the first bit about not being an asshole is be especially cool with your tech because they're kind of like your brother or sister. You know, I mean, they're they're there when things go wrong and you know, um, I, I remember the first night I played with Britt Floyd and the I, I was doing something dramatic. <laughs> you know, it was, I think it was after one of these days and I was just being dramatic and I just kind of like leaned over the drums and like I looked up and there's the tech like, hey, are you OK? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like they're oh, they're there for you and they're there when things go wrong. And, you know, but if you find that you're not in a situation where you have a tech and you're responsible for your gear. You know, in the case of my show that I play with called Celebrating Billy Joel, I tech myself. So before every run, I make sure, is everything in working order? Is everything sounding good? Do I need to replace anything like heads or, you know, maybe hardware that might be starting to go? You know, I've had to do that a few times. You're doing that weeks ahead of time. You're so good about yeah, that. Yeah, weeks ahead of time. And I'm making sure that things are are cleaned and maintained. And, you know, I'm, I'm basically trying to anticipate any issues that I might have. Because if something goes wrong on the road, I have to be able to fix that. And so, yep. you know, just making sure all of that is cool. And, and yeah, I, I tend to do this before we get to rehearsal and production days because... There's so many other things that are happening during those those days, like trying to get the audio working and and all of the, all the all of the visual stuff. You know, there's so much going on that the last thing I want to do is hold up anyone by saying, "Hey, I got to change some drum heads really, you know, really fast." Yeah. So yeah. I tend to do all of that, and and it really, you know, it it strengthens it strengthens my relationship to the instrument because it's like 
I'm taking care of them and I know that they're they're sounding the way I want, they're looking the way I want and that way when we start getting into that daily ritual of, you know, load in, set up, sound check, play the show, load out that I, I have nothing to worry about. And knock on wood, I've not had any kind of major tech things happen in the couple of years that I've been doing it. Yeah. You know, just because I, I take the time to make sure everything's cool. Oh, man. I mean, over time, I've had some absolutely complete failures. You know, most of them were just like stupid electronic things or whatever. Um, you know, others were, you know, me, maybe me not actually setting up a piece of gear, right? Like maybe a reed is like cockeyed on a, on my mouthpiece or something like that. But, but that to be said, like knowing your gear in and out too and being able to quickly kind of rescue yourself when something happens, like... Be, be that person who's like very into their gear that can fix those issues very quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of time, to be honest with you, there's there's been quite a few occasions where we've had some things that have gotten quite screwed up on stage. And most of the people that were at the show probably would have never known, mm -hmm. you know, just because it was able to be problem solved without, um, without me or others being the type of people that will like draw attention to the, the issue at hand. Like, you know, and again, like the, if the tech is really paying attention, which every one of our techs is really great at, they know when something's not right in the show. So uh, mega freaking shout out. Um, geez, Mike, you know, Greg Stocks is out with us now. He's unbelievable. Sean Mead, Jeff Clemens, Nate Willaislek. Those guys are kings. They really have done a great job looking out for us. So yeah, yeah, knowing knowing the gear and also knowing to have a couple of backup things. Like I have a backup snare, I have a backup pedal, I have a few spare drum heads just in case, because you never know. All right, so the last big thing on my list for you, and I'm really glad that you're gonna take this one because you're way better at it than I am, is prioritizing your health. 100%, yeah. I'm not as good as I want to be half the time, but yeah, I, it, it was something that I thought about a lot before going on the road because I've heard a lot of stories about, and it is true about, you know, you don't get the best sleep, you don't get the best meals sometimes, you know, it's funny, I, I've done both buyout tours and catering tours, and I thought catering tours would be easier to kind of maintain a healthy lifestyle, however... I found that when you're looking at that buffet spread and it's like, yeah, there's the healthy options, but there's like a never ending rotation and resupply of cookies all day. It's so easy just to keep going, you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, and of course buyouts, you know, you can eat anywhere you want. And sometimes you're really limited, you know, to what's around the venue. And, you know, we've, we've racked up some pretty big Uber bills, you know, trying to find good food and, you know, things that we want to try. And of course, that's kind of the fun part of touring is you get to go to all these different places around the country and around the world. You get to try different cuisines and things like that. But, you know, really making it a point to to eat healthy, not eat too much, also get some some great sleep. I think one of the things I think about a lot is really prioritizing the days off for my health. Oh my so, God. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So getting a chance to really rest up and, you know, most of the time on days off, you're in a hotel. So if they have a gym there, just getting a quick workout in, I actually travel with a yoga mat in my suitcase. And so I'll do some stretching mm. on the road, especially in the dressing room, because especially for like as physical of an instrument that the drum set is, you know, sometimes when you sleep in that bunk, you know, you'll wake up and you're really stiff because it's, you know, it's quite a not claustrophobic, but, you know, I don't get to kind of spread out as much as I do like in a regular bed. And so I find that I play better on days where I do like a yoga routine or a light workout. And again, it just kind of keeps you healthy. It keeps you functioning, sleeping well on the road. All of those things are super important. Drinking lots of water. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I'm not the best water drinker, I will admit, but it is definitely something that, again, keeps you hydrated, regulated. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know. But yeah, all of those things are really, really important because, especially for something like you, you're out on the road, you know, two, three months at a time. You know, you got to 
you got to stay going for, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks. And so, yeah, you, you know, I'm sure it catches up to you after a bit, but yeah, really prioritizing that is super yeah. important. I have to say right now, going back to your catering comment right now, we have, we're using new catering on this leg. I think, I think because our, our previous people that we've used for years were busy at, the, at this point, but they recommended this company eat to the beat, uh, for us. And not only are they amazing chefs, but they actually pull all the cookies and donuts and all that shit, you know, right as they're pulling the lunch down. So it's not there all day because I am the first person who will snack through the entire day, maybe even through set one if I possibly can. Like I remember, yeah, even when when Nate was tech, uh, teching for me, he would serve <laughs> He would serve me and Matt and Randy cake on the side <laughs> of the stage. <laughs> it was just, it was really wonderful, actually. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. But yeah, yeah, d- days off, like, uh, yeah, I can be good about that in different ways. Like, I'm really good at hiding. You know, I, I definitely am good at having days where I just, like, stay in and Uber Eats and play Xbox. But, like, yesterday I had a day off and I went out and walked, like, 10 miles or so like that and you know i try to get out at least and walk every day and like get some vitamin d because if you're stuck in the venue the whole time it's not going to help 100 percent. it's good it's good for your sanity to do all of these things i mean even even eating well it just yeah it's a lot but also like if you're doing these things you are also in a way protecting your bandmates and your crew guys i mean if you get ill and you're sharing a bus or a plane or a van or whatever it is that you're doing while you're touring, the proximity that you are to all those people, someone else mm-hmm. is going to get sick too. So you really have to do your best just to stay yeah, on top of Yeah, and that everything. became like a huge issue kind of post-COVID. Because I'm, you know, yeah, you had some, you had oh, some run-ins man. with COVID on tour. And that's that, I can't imagine that is a fun it experience was bad. at all. No, I mean... You know, uh, even this year, like I got COVID, I got COVID in the summer and the Brit Floyd policy is to isolate yourself, you know, to make sure that nobody else has COVID. If you can make the gig, make the gig. I happened to get COVID when we were just north of LA and I, as soon as that I got a positive test, I rented a car and I got hotels and I ended up driving for every gig from whatever that was, like maybe Bakersfield all the way until we swung back around to Denver just to make sure that nobody else was getting ill and no one else got ill. Wow. I'm yeah. sure that didn't help <laughs> having to drive all that way, you know, but but that I mean, but that's a really good protocol is that yeah. you know, you're you're making sure that you're not, you know, cuz uh, yeah, that that bus is very crowded and you know, you're around people constantly. Yeah, for sure. You're breathing the same air. Yeah. Those little shades don't <laughs> really protect much. <laughs> in the bus <laughs> no i mean even even now like if i feel like i'm getting ill like i'll, I'll put a mask on just uh just to kind of isolate myself in some part from anybody until i figure out what's going on and i mean for me you know a lot of time thankfully it's just allergies like i have really awful allergies but what yeah. can you do these are where our picks for the unwritten rules of how to be a good touring musician on the road thanks so much mikey for coming to hang out with me for a little bit you know seven (laughs) hours time difference yeah thanks for having uh, me yeah by the way if you guys want to know some more about mike really really great musician producer arranger writer multi-instrumentalist bass keys guitar drums percussion all the things i'll put some links down below and some on the screen and also Uh, a card so that you can go right to his YouTube channel and see some of the really cool music that he's working on. And some of it, maybe even with me. A little bit. All right. Peace. Peace. Also, don't shit on the bus. (laughs) I mean, but you said said unwritten rules. Uh, That's a very written rule.